So chapter 17 on equilibrium. And as we kind of highlight here in our review sheet with the five skills that are important, um, we first studied equilibrium and equilibrium constants and then thinking about reaction quotients. Then we used um, a Q versus K comparison to predict which direction a reaction would proceed. And then we've been working our way through equilibrium problems, learning how to create um, an ice table. Um, and then a number of sample problems that basically um, vary in difficulty based on how easy it is to um, obtain those equilibrium quantities. Um, if you have an ice table and need to solve for x, how easy is it to solve for x? So we're right now on our last problem here, which is probably as challenging as it gets because we have a situation where for our chemical equation we are actually given quantities of all four species which means it's not obvious which way the direction of the reaction is going to go. Is it going to proceed towards products or are we product heavy and we need to move back towards reactants? So in this case, the start of this problem requires that we actually do a Q versus K comparison and then we can work through the problem as we have with the rest, creating an ice table, solving for X and using that value to give us equilibrium expressions. Now I will say this problem isn't as hard as it possibly gets because we have a relatively easy way of solving for X in our ice table. And we'll see that as we work through. But to maintain kind of the same theme um, in terms of how we've solved these problems, I'm gonna work through the same basic steps that we have always used for solving our equilibrium problems. The first step is to write down our chemical equation We've got methane gas reacting with uh, H2S to give us CS2 and hydrogen gas. Next is we want to write our equilibrium uh, expression, our reaction quotient. So in this case, that's equal to H2 to the fourth times S2 over H2S squared CH4. First step again writing our reaction equation, writing our reaction quotient. The next step is to make sure that we have all of our species in the correct units. Since we're talking about Kc here, we need to have all our values in terms of concentrations and molarity. And so for this problem they tell us that we have one mole of each of CH4 and CS2 and then two moles each of H2S and H2 and we're combining them all in a 250 milliliter vessel at 960 degrees. So again, the concentration of CH4 is going to equal the concentration of CS2 because we have the same quantities of each, and that's gonna equal one mole in 0 0.250 liters because we have 250 milliliters, and that equals four molar. And then the concentration of H2S is going to equal that of H2 and that's again because we're given two moles of each of these so we're going to have two moles in 0 0.250 liters and so we have eight molar for those quantities. So when we set up our ice table here these are the initial values that go in and as we see here we have amounts of all four species so just looking at this, it's not exactly obvious which way this reaction is going to go. And we have an equilibrium constant that's not either very large or very small. So it's kind of obvious which side the equilibrium lies on. So we need to do a Q versus K comparison to see which direction we're going to go. So what we need to do is we need to put in our values for our equilibrium expression here. So in this case, um, we've got uh, H2 and CS2 as 8 and 4 molar, so we're going to have 8. And then that quantity again is going to be to the fourth times 4. And then our reactant values, so we're going to have 8. That's squared, and that's because that coefficient is 2. And then CH4 is going to be 4. You can just see mathematically without even pulling out a calculator. The fours will cancel and we'll end up having two of those up top. So our QC value is equal to 64. In this case, QC compared to KC, which is 0.036, this means we are product heavy. 
And when we are product heavy, that means a reaction needs to shift to the left. So that means we're going to be getting rid of some of our uh, products here. So we're going to have minus x and minus 4x. And we're going to be gaining some of our reactants back. So plus x and plus 2x. So again, this problem is unique and different from other ones that we've done in that this reaction actually is going to shift back towards reactants. So we have negative variables in our change column for products and positive variables in our change columns for our reactants. Coefficients again come down and become a part of our variable. So we're going to have 4 plus x, 8 plus 2x, 4 minus x, and 8 minus 4x. Again, these are the equilibrium concentrations for these four species. This problem at this point became a relatively easy um, ice table problem because they tell us one of the species concentrations at equilibrium. So in this case, they tell us that the CH4 concentration at equilibrium is equal to 5.56 molar. And we know that we've defined our equilibrium concentration as 4.00 plus x. So in this case, it's relatively straightforward to solve for what x is, and x is 1.56 molar. Now, again, with this problem, um, we had to predict which direction we were going to go. But for any of these problems, if you end up solving for x and you get an x that is a negative number, that means you made a mistake somewhere along, and you want to kind of go back and make sure you take a look at things and figure out um, what's going to be uh, your, your mistake there. So in this case, x is equal to 1.56 molar. So we can go through and then figure out the equilibrium concentrations of the other species, which is what this problem asks. We first again needed to figure out the direction that the reaction proceeded to reach equilibrium. And then we are, were able to easily solve our ice table for our x variable using an equilibrium concentration that's provided for methane. So we would like to know what are the equilibrium concentrations of the other substances. So in this case, the equilibrium concentration of CS2 is equal to 4.00 minus x, and that's going to be 4 minus 1.56, so that's going to be 2.44 molar. Equilibrium concentration of H2S is going to be equal to 8 plus 2x, and that's going to be equal to 11.2 molar, so 8 plus 2 times 1.56. And then lastly, H2 concentration at equilibrium is going to be equal to 8 minus 4x, and that's equal to 1.76 molar. Just as a reminder, if you want to do an internal check and make sure that your values are correct, you can take your equilibrium expression, which in this case is equal to 0.036, and that's equal to the equilibrium concentration of H2 to the fourth times CS2 at equilibrium over H2S squared equilibrium times CH4 at equilibrium. And by putting these values in that we obtained, so again H2 is going to be 1.76, we're going to uh, take that to the fourth power. CS2 concentration is going to be 2.44 divided by, we've got uh, H2S, which is going to be 11.2. And again, the H2S is going to be squared. And then the CH4 concentration, which is 5.56. Mathematically, we need to confirm that this equals 0 0.036. And we'll see that within some experimental error, it does. Keep in mind, because we do some rounding um, often when we go through this, this might not be exact, uh, but it should be close enough so that you can confirm that you did your uh, ice table calculations properly.